Alrighty, welcome to a Tuesday night damaged Chronicles episode. And we are up to number three right now. We are going to rank the studio albums by obviously Bay Area Legend. Everybody knows who this band is. We're going to be ranking the 10 studio albums by none other than Metallica. And we got a special guest on board right now. If you want to introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. This is Chuck from uh, Podcast and Stone. And uh, thanks for having me on, Metal Ben. I'm a big fan of the show. Thank you. And we're happy to have you on. And, of course, we got Ryan, Ryan Arnold here, too, the Demon Master from the Damage Incorporated channel. All right. Great so to I figured be back. We'd... Awesome. All right. So I figured what we would do right now is talk about what got us into Metallica before we get into ranking the whole discography. So, Chuck, if you want to begin, go right ahead. Sure. I remember um, it was right after Ride the Lightning came out. I had a, uh, a cousin of mine introduce me to both albums at the same time, both Kill em All and Ride the Lightning. And uh, we, that was back in the days of putting a cassette to a cassette. We didn't even have a double cassette recorder then. We just put one cassette player in front of another, and I put them on a 90-minute tape. And just fell in love with the band and then not too long after that i saw just puppet shirts everywhere and i remember the exact day that i went to the mall and got the cassette tape of puppets and just just the intro to battery to to present my mind was just blown so i pretty much fell in love with them instantly luckily enough in the early days so i've been along with the ride since ride the lightning oh cool cool did you ever see him live back then no, I didn't get to see him live until the uh, 94, uh, uh, I forget what that tour was called, after the box set came out, the oh, Binge I and Purge. Was, oh, oh, yeah, okay. I think it was so called was the Summer song. or something. Yeah. All right, Ryan, how did you get into Metallica? Well, okay. Um, I believe, I can't remember when, I was probably either a young, or a, a, pre, a pre-teen or teenager, somewhere around there, um, I believe stumbling upon, my dad had a copy of the Black Album, I listened to it on CD, and listened to a few songs on it, and I, I definitely enjoyed it, I really, but I think it might have been at the time when, um, might have been around the time when Saint Anger was about to come out, and that was actually the Black Album was my first album I listened to from them, and um, and then basically the first album I ever bought was Saint Anger, and I've been a huge fan of them and got all their albums right around high school time. So, so I got into them with the Black Album when I was like um in middle school. Interesting. Um, by the way, hello, Chris Knott. Welcome to the stream. Stephanie Wetzel, welcome to the stream. Hello, guys. Okay, well, I've told the story quite a few times how I got into Metallica. Basically, it's around August or September of 1988. I was roughly nine years old. I'm a a friend of mine at the time, he was a couple years older than me, he had got Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets on cassette tape and kill them all. Well, the first one I heard was Master of Puppets. And oh my god, when I first heard Battery, like you said, it blew me away. I couldn't believe it. It, it was just the coolest thing I've ever heard, you know, at the time. And it it's definitely responsible for turning in, me into a huge metalhead. I mean, if it wasn't for Metallica, I wouldn't be sitting here today, you know, still listening to the to this music, you know, 
32, 33 years later. So yeah, Master of Puppets was the beginning, and that's pretty much it. Nice. All right, so I when guess we... we go ahead. When was your first time seeing the band live? <laughs> Unfortunately, I have not saw. I have not got to see Metallica yet. Okay. I almost went last Same year. Same here. They came I around here in 2019. It was 2019 they came around here, and I didn't go at the time. Money was a little short, so and the tickets yeah. were pretty, you know, expensive. But hopefully, I'll eventually get to see them before you know it's too late. But yeah. Hell yeah. Same here. All right. Well, I guess we will jump right into the rankings. Um, I guess we'll start off with our guest, Chuck. All right. So uh, for number 10, and uh, this is a for, for being last, it's still an excellent record. Um, I have to go with Reload wow. as my number 10. Um, it's got some outstanding tracks. Um, Memory Remains. Um, I love Bad Seed. To me, there's just a couple of filler tracks that uh, are skippers for me. So, but I, it's still an outstanding record. So, I have to go with uh, Reload as my number 10. Okay. How about you, Ryan? Um, it, this was a no-brainer for me. Uh, number 10 is e easily St. Anger. A lot of people have always said that this was this is their worst album, and it, 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 it subjectively is their worst. But to me, when it comes to this album, I don't I don't necessarily think it's as bad as what everyone thinks. Um, and I'll, I'll explain this. I have no problem with there being no guitar solos. I have no problem with there being no snare. I have no problem with Bob Rock being on bass. I absolutely love the first three tracks and think that every other track has some good things. It's just that those songs were just, just went on a little bit too long. Like if they were like maybe three to five minutes long, it would be it would be awesome, but, you know, they draw them out for too damn long. Okay. So, yeah, St. Anger's number 10 for me. Well, my number 10, too, is also St. Anger. Well, okay. <laughs> A lot of what you said, yes, Ryan, pretty much. Um, my problem with the album is it's very disjointed. The songwriting's just all over the place. I think James Hedfield's voice sounds pretty weak in a lot of spots. Um, to me, it sounds pretty unfocused. <laughs> and we all know about the legendary production of this album with the drums sounding like tin cans. However, if you dig through this album, you do find some riffs on this album that are actually good or could have been potentially used for better songs. Like, I think the opening track, Frantic, it's decent. It's actually not a bad track. Well, the Frantic tick, 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 talk thing is pretty annoying, but besides that, it's got some decent riffs in it. Another track on here I really like is probably The I Unnamed do. Filling. I think The Unnamed Filling is put together quite well. Uh, the rest of the album, Dirty Widows, oh, that song gets on my nerves. Invisible Kids, I don't care for. Um, let's see here. Shoot Me Again actually has cool riffs, but again, it's another track I can't get into. All, with, all Within My Hands, the final track, you know, I think it could have been better if more was put into it. <laughs> But yes, Saint Anger comes in at number ten for my list. All right, on to number nine. Okay, for number nine, I'm going to keep that Saint Anger train running. And uh, you, you guys both hit on kind of some good points. Um, 
I actually love Dirty Window, Ben. I think it's amazing. Uh, it, it's you. You got to take this album for what it is, and you know you're right. The production is not what it's used to. What you're used to. The songs are long. I'm a Maiden fan, so I don't mind an eight nine minute song. I'm used to that. Iced Earth also. Right so here. I don't I don't mind the long songs. I think that. I mean, I would love if they would, in quarantine, go back and redo this album and, like, totally reproduce it. I mean, that's not going to happen, but I would love to hear it with excellent quality. You know, I don't know how Bob Rock went from the Black album to this. I mean, I'm sure he was just doing what they wanted to. But um, yeah. all within my hands, like you said, that's so much better on the symphony version than it is on this one. They nailed that on the uh, S&M um, I love Sweet Amber. Um, the first first three tracks are great i think um to me the the dead one on here is purify but it's still one that i go to a lot and i i love the anger i love the attitude and just the feel of it so number nine for me is saint anger okay interesting all right mr ryan arnold you're number nine my number nine is their most recent album hardwired to self-destruct um Ooh. First disc. Oh, first disc. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna say. First disc. First disc. Absolutely perfect. My problem with this start on disc two with confusion, where I felt like that was a confusing mess of a song, and I'm just like, I don't know. But then he got back into it with Man on Kind, and here comes Revenge. Where I thought those back to back were like, okay, they're getting back on track here. They had a one stinker. And then my savage came, and I was like, "Ugh, it's easily, easily the worst Metallica song I have ever heard. Like, without a doubt, it, it's just like, ugh. It kind of did pick back up with Murder One, and original, originally I didn't really care for Spit Out the Bone." But after hearing it live, I thought, okay, this song's pretty good. I like it. I like it a little bit. So only, I could say, this two, if it was just one disc, this would easily be the best modern Metallica album, easily. But it's number nine for me. Oh, man. Spit out the boom really got abuse there. <laughs> I, right. I, I end up liking it. I end up liking it because of the live version of it. I actually liked it. Liked it at that point after listening to the live version. I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, just reading the comments here real quick before we go into my choice. So we got Chris Knotts here. My intro to Metallica was Puppets. Quickly bought the discography. Load was my very first cassette tape. Interesting. That's awesome. I wish I could show you guys my Saint Anger mug. It's epic. I don't think I've ever seen that. It is. I've seen it. It's, it's very cool. Oh, that's cool. And then he <laughs> says, the unnamed, feeling, the unnamed Feeling is awesome. Love that song. Yeah, that's definitely a highlight. Then we got that out. Step it. Stephanie, Stephanie West says, my intro to Metallica was a black album, like me. That's awesome. Still one of my favorites. Awesome. And then we got Chris saying, hardwired rules. <laughs> I can agree with you. Well, can argue that. There's, just, there's some stinkers on it. All right. Okay. Let's move on to my number nine. Uh, I still have trouble getting into this album. 1996 is a load. Now I'm going to explain something here. And this could be because, you know, I heard Metallica first, you know, way back in the 80s. Okay, 1996 comes, you know. I remember really looking forward to another Metallica album because at that time it had been five years. You know, I was 17 at the time. So for me... I was kind of excited when I heard they're going to finally put out a new album. Then I heard the track Until It Sleeps. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. This sounds way too watered down and radio friendly. 
But, you know, I still went out and bought mood. I looked at the back. I'm like, oh, Lord, they cut their hair. They're wearing pimp suits, smoking Cuban cigars. <laughs> I was a pretty angry 17-year-old kid, needless to say, when I bought this. Now, over time, some of this has grown on me. Like, I'll go through and tell you what I like about Lode. I think the opening track, Ain't My Bitch, is a great track. It's a good, you know, fairly heavy track. Two by four, uh, still don't care for it. I do like the house to Jack built. I think that's a pretty good song. I know a lot of people love this song, but I do not like Until It Sleeps. I didn't like it then, and I still don't like it today. King Nothing, uh, still not a fan of that track much either. To me, it's a watered-down version of Enter Sandman. Um, Hero of the Day, eh, it's got its moment. Like, the heavier parts of the song are okay. Now, Bleeding Me, the final track on the first tap. Brilliant song. I do love Bleeding Me. I think it's a great song. Hell yeah. Cure, Cure pretty forgettable. <coughs> Excuse me there. Poor Twisted Me. I oh, still don't like it. Wasting My Hate. Actually, don't mind it. It's one of the heavier tracks on the album. Mama said, a country ballad, for the most part, eh, it's whatever. <laughs> now, this track right here, I think, is really underrated. The Thorn Within. I think that's a great track. It's heavy, oh. and it kind of sounds like a little bit like what Metallica previously had sounded like on the Black Album. So it's got some decent heavy riffs in it. Ronnie, I cannot stand. The last track, The Outlaw Torn, I actually do enjoy. So, yeah, you know, it's grown on me a little bit. A lot of it I still don't care for, but you know what? What I like on it, I can listen to. And that's my number nine, Load. That's fair enough. All right, for number eight, I'm going to go with Death Magnetic. <laughs> And I hate that I can't rank this one higher, but I just like the other ones ahead of it. Um, this one doesn't have a skipper on me except for uh, Suicide and Redemption. I get a little bored with the uh, instrumental there. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of people I've heard reviews, you know, they don't like the, uh, the production and this, the sound wars were going in. To me, it's louder in my iPod. I don't mind that at all. I, I think it sounds outstanding. This was you know, the album after St. Anger, and I was just ecstatic with the way it sounded. So I think the production's great on it. I think it's kind of a return to form. Um, Unforgiven 3 is an outstanding track. Judas Kiss, um, All Nightmare Long to me is just, I would put it in the top 10 Metallica songs. It's outstanding. Um, Oh, I agree. Uh, the the day that never comes, just it's a, it's an outstanding album. I I can't say anything bad about it. It's just that Metallica's discography is so so good that I can't put it higher than eight. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I happen to have Death Magnet. I happen to have Death Magnetic at number eight as well. Um. I. To say that this is the best, to me, the best modern metallic album since I had the other modern albums ahead of it kind of makes me frustrated. And I love this album. I, I just hate the fact that it's the best one. And it made, I really wanted Hardwired to be the best one. But, you know, Confusion and Am I Savage exist. But this one, I'm kind of get. I, I kind of agree with you. I don't care about the instrumental at all it just didn't do anything for me and i didn't even care about their fast song my apocalypse to me everything after unforgiven three just kind of fell for me i liked i liked the judas kiss it was a pretty good song I was like oh, this is pretty cool i absolutely love the first two tracks you know that was just your life the end of the line the day that never comes, all nightmare long, unforgiven three. I absolutely love. I'm just so frustrated that this was when I was reviewing this back in the day. I was just so frustrated 
that even after doing all the rankings and stuff since Hardwire came out, I'm just so frustrated. It's the best modern Metallica album, in my opinion. I just, it kind of was just, I got frustrated. I want the new album whenever it comes out to be the best one. But until then, Death Magnetic is the best one, best modern Metallica album for me. And it's at number eight. Alrighty. Well, my number eight is going to be the follow up to Load. Reload. I think it's slightly better than Load. Mm. Opening track, Fuel. Great track. Sounds great live. The memory remains. I actually kind of enjoy that track too. Devil's Dance, my favorite track off this album. It definitely goes back to more of a black album type of feel on that track. The Unforgiven 2, it's okay. I prefer the original Unforgiven over it. Okay, better than you. It's got a cool riff, but I don't really care for the song much. Okay, Slither, don't care for. Carp Dime Baby, it's okay. So then we flip it over to the other side. Bad Steed, probably the weakest track on the album. It's heavy, but it's not one of my favorites. Sorry about that, Chuck. <laughs> Not one of my favorites. Where the Wild Things Are. I think it's a very underrated Metallica track. I really do. I really like it for some reason. And James is singing really different on that track. Prince Charming's actually a pretty decent track, too. It's pretty heavy. Low Man's Lyrics, which would be the country ballad -y type of track. I like it better than Mama said, but then again, I do like some Southern rock, so that doesn't really bother me. Attitude's pretty weak. I don't like Attitude. Fixer, to me, sounds like a part two of the Outlaw Torn. It really does, and I don't mind it. So number eight would be Reload. All right, so now nice. we're up to seven. All right, for number seven... Uh... I'm going to go uh, hardwired. Um, I, I, I love this record. I remember uh, like songs started sneaking out and I wanted to, I like to wait until I have the whole album to hear it. So I, I was able to wait and I just remember going to uh, Best Buy and picking this up and just being blown away by side one. Now to me, side two is outstanding. Also, I don't like man unkind and I don't like, uh, Am I Savage? The rest of them I could listen to. And if you get to three disc, I love the extra tracks like Ronnie Rising and stuff. I mean, I'm not counting that, but that's an outstanding bonus to kind of get people to buy physical media. I have no problem with them doing that. I think the production on this is just stellar. Uh, some songs like Halo and Fire and Atlas Rise and uh, Moth in the Flame just shows how well they've aged and can still put out an outstanding song. I think this album's super catchy. Um, and if you if you want the, the kill them all riffs and the punk, you got hardwired. I mean, that's. But there, there's to me, there's two clunkers in this. But I'll take that out of uh, you know a, a ten or eleven track album any day of the week. So I, I love hardwired, and that one actually has potential to go up one more on me. So hardwired is my number seven. All right, interesting. All right, Ryan. All right, sorry about that. Hold on, let me get these. Fuck. Okay, okay, Fine, my. Man. Okay, what did he say was number seven? He said hardwired. I, I might get some hate for this one. My number seven <laughs> is kill them all. Oh. <laughs> Oh. I, 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 love, I love the I love I love the album. Um, I'll explain later in the live stream. But I love the album. I'm just I it's a great thrash album. That's just like you know it's a thrash album. I'm not too overly when it sounds like a thrash album. I like some thrash that are more different. As why you might see the other '80s stuff 
being a little bit higher than it. But you know, I love hit the lights, four horsemen jump in the fire. I love them seeking destroying, no remorse. I I personally kind of like the Diamond Head version they released last year, which was fr- pretty freaking awesome. But this album in and of itself, it's an awesome album. I have nothing bad to say about it. I just I just prefer other al- I prefer other albums from them. So Kill 'Em All for me is number seven. Oh man, you might want to run. There might be some pitchfork forks coming at you, Ryan. <laughs> Anyways, on to my number seven. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Death Magnetic. I honestly don't have any problem with this album. Uh, yeah, the production could be a little better, I guess, in aspect. I mean, it's definitely way better than Saint Anger on a production level. Don't get me wrong. Like, I honestly think there's some decent tracks on here. The opening track's killer. That was just your life. Definitely a throwback to the Master of Puppets days, you know, in a way. And to me, The End of the Line, another strong track, you know. Broken, Beaten, Scarred, pretty decent, not bad. The Day That Never Comes, obviously... It kind of sounds like a cross between um, Fade to Black and One. I mean, you can definitely tell it does. Either or, I think it's a decent track, and I think it sounds pretty darn good live. And I think the ending jam part of the track is excellent. Some of Metallica's best jamming, probably since Justice, up to that point. You got Cyanide, which I think is a decent track. I like Cyanide. The Unforgiven Three. Here's where we're going to get a bit controversial. That's my favorite of the Unforgiven songs. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I think it's really good. It sounds great on the new uh, S&M, too. The Judas Kiss, definitely a throwback to the 80s. Great track. I agree. Suicide and Redemption, weak. It is way- it's not that it's weak. It's just way too long, and it does get pretty boring in spots. I mean, the, it's them definitely trying to go back to the days when they did long instrumentals like called Cthulhu or Ryan and To Live Is To Die. But it just doesn't work for me. And My Apocalypse is one of the weaker thrash tunes on the album. I just, I used to really like it, then I was listening to it the other day. And that's where the production really sounds bad, is on the track My Apocalypse. Something about that track just does not click with me. Overall, yeah, it's my number seven. I did say a lot of good things about the album, but I just think with a a little bit better of a production, it would have sounded maybe a bit better. But yeah, Death Magnetic would be my number seven. Now we're up to number six. A side note to that, Ben, is... uh... If you're a Metallica fan and haven't seen it, the uh, Quebec Magnetic from that tour, they play, I think, well over half the album. Those albums, those tracks sound great live. Oh, on that album. It. Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah, so that's a good DVD. All right, so we're up to number six now. Um, for me, this one might be controversial. I'm going Black Album number six. Yeah. Mm. Um, this album was absolutely huge my senior year. It came out right after I graduated. And uh, just some of the, I mean, there, there's really not a bad track on here. Um, of course, they went shorter songs, more polished. I think Bob Rock was good for the band. I know a lot of people kind of, a lot of the thrasher, headbanger people kind of think that everything past black is bad. Um, I totally am not one of those people. I think there's some outstanding tracks on here. Uh, Unforgiven has maybe the best Kirk solo ever. Um, I don't mind the, the radio-friendly songs, the Wherever I May Roam, the Through the Never, um, of Wolf and Man. All There's not a bad song on here. I love Enter Sandman. I, I, I think it, I can't hold against this album how popular it is and how many times i hear it on the radio like you want to almost say it's too overplayed but you can't take away how powerful this album is and how many people this album turned to metal and it's a huge one of the hugest metal albums and like i said i can't 
take points away just because I've heard sad but true a million times on the radio. So for me, I, I love this album. It's a, it's it's a it's a classic for me. Number six for the Black Album. All right. All right. My number six is "And Justice for All." Um. Yes, the bass, the bass, the infamous no show of the bass is playing a factor when it comes to this. But other than that, I love Blackened. I love the title track. I love what hell. I even love To Live Is To Die. It's the production and how they were so freaking ignorant of not boosting Jason in the mix and having the bass be prevalent in there. It, it, it is a huge, huge problem for me. And I, I it's... Ugh. If it had bass, this would definitely be higher. This would definitely be in the top ten. Ab- guaranteed. Absolutely. But, again, it's... That's... The base is... No base is the reason. And, and that is my number six. Still a killer album. I love it. All right. So, just double checking here. Okay. All right. All right. Going to take a quick look at the comments here. Chris Knotts, I don't like the production on Magnetic. Songs are great, though. Chris Knotts again. Halo on Fire is my favorite on Hardwired. And Stephanie says, you're all getting some unpopular opinions here laughing out loud. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you know how I am. You know, sometimes. we're all like we all like different ver- eras of Metallica. So we're about you're about to see why in my top five. Oh man, I literally just had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought if I was gonna have Justin, a- If it's because of me having just the number six, I apologize. And, uh, uh, to be plain and short, I didn't get into 80s Metallica until later. I will explain in full later. But, Alrighty. Ben, what is your number six? Well, me and Chuck actually agree. I'm going with the Black Album. Oh, man. Now, I definitely go all the way back to 91 when this first came out. Got to be honest, when I first heard it, I hated it. I hated it. Of course, you know, I'm 13. I'm really, really mass into thrash. And at that time, I didn't like anything slower or melodic. Everything had to be fast. So when I first heard this, I was extremely disappointed and let down. You know? And I think it bugged me when I noticed that jocks were getting into Metallica all of a sudden. And, you know, people at school that wouldn't get into Metallica a couple years earlier are now into Metallica. You know, the popular crowd or whatnot. In school, and that turned me off. I'm like, yo, you're taking my band away from me. <laughs> you know? I mean, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but over time, the album did grow on me. There's great stuff on here. I mean, Enter Sandman, it's definitely played out. I can't even listen to it anymore. Sad But True has a great rip. It's heavy as hell, but again, it's another track I can't you know, listen to anymore. Holier Than Thou, definitely one of my favorites on the album. Now, that track definitely goes back to a bit of the thrash. Not full on, but a bit, you know, it's got a little bit of thrash to it. Got the original one, Forgiven. Again, it's played out. You know, I mean, it's well written, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, played out. Wherever I May Roam, still one of my favorite tracks on here. And it's a played out track, but I still like it. Okay, Don't Tread on Me to end off the first half. Good track. It's pretty cool and heavy. Okay, so we flip it over to Through the Never. Probably my favorite track on the album. Now, Through the Never, it's probably the heaviest track on here, but the thrashiest. You know, I wouldn't say like full thrash, but you know, it's definitely the probably, 
I would say probably close to being one of the more aggressive tracks on here. Nothing else matters. I can't listen to anymore. Of Wolf and Man, it's a killer track. Killer heavy track. I do love it. Of Wolf and Man, great track. The God That Felled. I think it's a pretty underrated track, too. I like it. My Friend of Misery. Oh. Now, this track right here, yes, it's more melodic, but is it? Oh, my God, it's freaking good. It almost sounds like something Cliff would have written. Jason Newstead wrote a brilliant bass line for that track. I love it. Excellent track. And originally, it was going to be an instrumental which I kind of wish they would have just left it an instrumental now the more I think about it. And the last track, The Struggle Within, great way to end the album. I love the beginning of it with the military drums, and it's a pretty heavy track. So yeah, coming in at number six, The Black Album. Uh, with Misery, uh, maybe with the uh, 30th anniversary, maybe the... Uh instrumental version will be on the uh, the box set. That'd be awesome. I'd love to hear that. Now that you mentioned that, I, I want to hear that. I do too. So. Man. I'm, It'd I'm be easy for them to do that. All right. So we're going into the top five. Um, yes, top five. Top five. I don't have the CDs with me in front of me. So uh, this one I thought I was going to get some hate mail on, but... Uh, Ryan kind of softened the blow on that one. Um, I'm going kill them all in number five. And mm. uh, just some outstanding tracks. And just, it's one of the best metal opening albums there is. Um, just staples. You got, you know, Whiplash, You Can Destroy, Hit the Lights. There's so many. Four Horsemen is, uh, to me, my favorite of the album still. And then you got Anesthesia. Um, I think this album, for me, suffers from what the Kiss debut album does, and that's the live album, Kiss Alive. All the tracks are way better live. So I think that I'm so used to to Whiplash live and Seek and Destroy live and Hit the Lights live that, to me, the studio, when I go back to the studio album, it's tame. It, I mean, it's still awesome, but almost every one of these tracks... I prefer live more. Right. So kind of like with the, with the Kiss debut album, it's because Kiss Alive is so awesome. So to me, that's the only thing that hurts Kill Em All from being in the top three is just that all these versions I prefer live and on different live albums and bootlegs and stuff that I rarely go back to the the studios as much as you know I would otherwise. So for me, Kill Em All is number five. Okay. Interesting. All right, Ryan, what's your number five? Oh, y'all ain't gonna like it. You ain't gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, everybody's gonna hate me for this one. Number five. Reload. Oh no, he's being quiet. <laughs> Yeah, I said reload. Um, again, I will get into it later, but again, I I grew up with the 90s side of Metallica. We all get into different versions of them. I got into the 90s. I'll go more fully, but for what you said earlier, I love, love Fuel. The only song, I love every song on here except for maybe Devil's Dance and Low Man's Lyric. I just think those are pretty much the weak moments on here. Could have been, for me, higher. I know you're shaking your head, Chuck. Yes, Devil's Dance is amazing. I, I, <laughs> That's a great track. Yeah, what's wrong with I, you, dude? I, 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 could, I, couldn't, I could not get into it without having to hear that that intro. That intro was just so confusing to me. I was just like, I don't know if I could get into it. If I, maybe if I after this, if I might be brave enough to go listen to it, put it in my CD player, and be like, okay, I want to give this song a chance. I want to give this song a chance. The low end's lurk, I can't get into that one at all. It's just like, ugh. but yeah, but reload is my number five. 
<laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right, my number five. Might be controversial to why I would put this in my top five. I really enjoy this album. Hardwired to self-destruct oh, wow. in it. Five. Man, when I first heard Hardwired, I mean, you know, the track came out of nowhere. It was, it was unannounced. It was just released. I'm like, holy shit. This is the thrashiest shit they've done since probably Justice. You know? Like, as far as, like, full on, you know? And it right away got me excited for this album, you know? Same with Atlas Rise. Atlas Rise is a freaking great track. You can definitely hear... It's pretty cool with Atlas Rise. You can definitely hear a Merciful Fate and Iron Maiden influence in there. You know, a little bit of Run to the Hills, you know, or or not Run to the Hills, um, Holy Be My Name, you know, with the harmonic guitar parts in that track. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it's a great track. I think it's a great track, yes. Now That We're Dead, again, another great heavy track. More mid-paced, but it's got some pretty cool rips. Moth Into Flame, another excellent track. <clears throat> to me, Hell yeah. the, structure, the structure of this track, in some ways, kind of goes back to Disposable Heroes, the way it's structured a little bit, especially with the speedier part, oh. with that little simple guitar lead that Kirk Hammett's playing in the background. So I really enjoy Moth Into Flame. All right, so then we got Dream No More. God, this track is fucking great. It's definitely Sad But True Part 2. It definitely has a Sad But True feel to it. However, since it's not overplayed, I enjoy it more. <laughs> but yeah, I do like Dream No More. And Halo on Fire, great way to end off the first half of this album, just to... You know, an over eight minute long epic track. You get a little bit of melody in there. You get some heaviness. You get some epic guitar parts in there by Headfield and Hammett. Yeah, man, great track. Confusion, okay. Confusion's a little. It's not a bad track, but it is kind of forgettable. Yeah, I, I definitely like I said, it's a confusing mess. <laughs> it's not a bad track. I, mean, I don't like. I don't hate it, but it's not one of my favorites either. Now, I definitely agree with Chuck on this one. Man Unkind, I cannot stand it. There's something about that track that oh, just wow. does not... I don't like Man Unkind. Here Comes Revenge, great track. Yep. best One of the best tracks okay. on this too. Easily. Am I Savage again? I'm in agreement. I do not like that track. It sounds way too much like a B-side from Load. It's Murder so Box. it's so bad it shouldn't have been on me. Yeah, it's definitely the weakest track on the album. Well, besides Man Unkind, Murder One. At first, I was a little disappointed, and I'm going to explain why here. Because for a for a song that's a tribute to Lemmy, I felt like it should have been fast. But you know what? It's a track too. I feel like it's not complete. I feel like it's a decent track. I mean, it's a great way to pay tribute to Lemmy, you know. It's got some decent rips in here, you know. And the last track on the album, the best track on this whole disc, is definitely Spit Out the Bone. Easily. If you want to go back through their thrash days back in the 80s, even, you know, Death Magnetic, where they tried going back to thrash in a lot of ways, Spit Out the Bone is definitely the best song they've written when it comes to that style in years. Excellent track. It's heavy, it's fast, and it definitely sounds like old school Metallica from the 80s. So yeah, that's my number five, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Nice. I, want, right. I, I can almost agree with you on some of those. I want it to be the best, but it's just that second disc had so many problems. But go ahead, Chuck. 
All right, for number four, this this is going to be my controversial pick of the uh, of my list. Number four, I'm going with load, and uh, it's unpopular, Ooh. but I'll tell you, in at the time that this came out, you're talking five, six years after Black. You know, they just came off of a huge album. They they switched. I love that they didn't just do this the ACDC formula of just putting out the same album and not branching out. They they took a risk. They you know, long hair wasn't you know, uh, hair metal was going away and grunge was in. They came out yeah. looking like Cuban pimps, and I didn't mind. You know, they put on a little airline a little eyeliner. I don't listen with my eyes, so I had no problem. I don't. Put that, put that that look and the haircut and stuff into the album at all. To me, when I hear "Ain't My," I mean, as soon as I heard "Ain't My Bitch," I'm like, "This is my Metallica." I don't care that they got haircuts. Um, there's not a weak track on here to me until it sleeps. The video, I think, is just cutting edge and amazing. Um, Hero of the day, so I, I love it. I think it's it's simplistic and it, it's it's catchy. Um, Bleeding Me is one of the outstanding Metallica tracks. If you put on that on any other album, it's right up there with Battery or Disposable Heroes or whatever. Um, the Cure is is a, a stock track, but it sounds outstanding on here. Um, Wasting My Hate, I love. Uh, Mama, Mama said, I don't mind. I don't. It's not a go-to. But then um, Thorn Within and Outlaw Torn. Outlaw Torn is easily in my top 10 Metallica songs. It sounds great on here, even better on the symphony. So I am one of those people that wave the load flag. So load is my number four. Cuban pimps and all. <laughs> Another thing I forgot to mention too about load. I will give yeah. load and reload credit for this. Obviously the Black Album too. The production is phenomenal on, it, on those three albums. It is very yep. good production, so I can't take that away from them. All right, Ryan, you're number four. My number four, Ride the Lightning, their second album. I, 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 I love some songs if I were to go through and be like you, but Fight Fire Word Fire is a pretty decent song. I will admit, I do kind of like it a little bit. Then we've got the title track, Killer. For whom the bell tolls, awesome. Fade to black, which I believe is the first song that Metallica ever wrote that um that Kirk had some writing co contributions for it. A few of the songs on here, different. I believe Fade to Black, Fade to Black, I believe is the first on here. Um, yeah, Eve is the, this is his first songwriting credit in the band, and um, Fade to Black is awesome. I personally prefer it live. But and that's just my opinion. I love the song. Um, under Ice and Escape, I really don't care. They might be like just kind of fillery in some cases. I really don't care about But then you close out the album with Creepy Death, which they usually play. They usually open their live shows with Creepy Death. Either that with, um, what was that one song? Uh, Ecstasy of Gold and into Creepy Death. Awesome. And then arguably, in my opinion, the best instrumental they've ever done, The Call of Cthulhu. I absolutely love this instrumental from them. Freaking awesome. But again, Excellent. there are three other albums that I love more than it. But this, it's no slouch. Ride the Lightning is a killer album, and it is my number four. Alrighty. Alright, back to the chat here for a minute. So just seeing what everybody's saying here. Oh, we got Cassette Mayhem Dan in it. Excuse me, Cassette Mayhem Dan in the stream. My good friend Dan Powers. He's got a great YouTube channel too. Yep, he says, Load is a uh, wicked yeah. album. Bleeding Me. I, oh, yeah, Bleeding Me is definitely a great, great track from Load. And he likes Master of Puppets. Yeah. That's his number one. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, my we're getting four. there. Yeah. All right, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here when it comes to Metallica. 
And these four albums are definitely hard to rank for me. So many years, so much memories with these four albums. And this album used to be my number one. <laughs> Actually, at one point, each of these albums was probably my number one at some point. But coming in at number four is And Justice Ooh. for All. Still love this freaking album. Like, to me, it's, a, it's an excellent album. I mean, Blackened. Great track, great intro hey. to backwards harmonic guitar solos. I just love it. It's aggressive in your face. And Justice for All. You know, Metallica really stepping into progressive metal on this track. It's got lots of time changes. Yeah. You know, Lars sounds freaking great on this album. Actually, you know what? I think this is probably Lars' best drum performance on a Metallica album, to be honest. You know? I mean, you know, it's a shame that Lars gets a lot of flack nowadays for being such a shitty and lazy drummer. But deep down inside, you know what? Lars is really not that bad of a drummer. Okay, maybe, you know. I mean, <laughs> go back and listen to Injustice for All. The drumming's phenomenal on here. You know? I mean, I know he gets a lot of flack nowadays. Of course, you know, nowadays it's pretty hip to just bash Metallica, obviously. But <laughs> anyways, yes, and Justice for All, great track. I have the Beholder. It's more of a deep cut on here, you know. I would say I have the Beholder. It's probably a pretty forgotten track on here, you know. But however, I do enjoy it. One. Need I, say yeah. Need I say no. more? Need I say more? No, 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 we all, no. Know it. we all know it. Excellent track, excellent track. Pretty controversial video at the time, and it was the very first video they ever made up to that point. Okay, so now we flip it over to the second half with the shortest straw. Yes, the shortest straw has been pulled for you. Love this track. One of my favorites off this album. I love it. Harvester of Sorrow. Now, Harvester of Sorrow is actually pretty interesting. To me, it's really a predecessor to what you would hear on the Black Album, if you really think about it. It's more mid-paced, you know. Pretty yeah. sad, but true. Right, right, right. It's got excellent melody in it, excellent riffs, you know. We got the frayed ends of sanity. Definitely a deep cut on here. Doesn't get mentioned much. A lot of people would say it's one of the weaker tracks on here. I disagree. I think it's a phenomenal track. It's got great riffs. You know, to live is to die. One of the final tracks written by Cliff Burton, co-written by Cliff Burton. Now. It would be really interesting. I do agree. I wish they would remaster this with the bass in it. Hell because yeah. Cliff wrote a really awesome bass line behind this. You can find it on YouTube. It is freaking phenomenal sounding. I would love to hear it in the mix on, you know, a remastered version of, you know, and Justice for All that's done right, you know. Either or, it's a great instrumental, you know. Because when a man lies, he murders some part of the world. I love that line, you know. Yes. And we get arguably probably my favorite of their thrashy tunes, Dyer's Eve. Just straight up thrash. Sounds pissed off. Great way to end what a lot of people would call their last great album. But yeah, I think it's a great thrashy tune. Because I've outgrown that fucking lullaby. You know what I mean? <laughs> but no, great tune. Dire Z, great album in my opinion. Yeah, that's my number four. I agree, though. There should be a version out there made with the bass in it. I mean, there's versions on YouTube you can find. But, you know, like an, an actual physical copy would be sweet. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah there, I think there's a couple... There's a couple yeah. bootlegs. One's called Injustice for Jason. And I think there's one called... Uh, uh, and Jason for all or something. There's a couple of different ones out there. 
Yeah. So, I, if you're if I you're wanting a physical copy. Right. All right. Okay. So from for me, number three, the top three, just like Ben, I think uh, uh, all three of these have been my favorite at, at one point in the uh, in my journey. Number three for me is Ride the Lightning. Um, what iconic uh, artwork and uh, just the, just the songs are amazing. Just uh, Creeping Death is a highlight. Uh, Call of Cthulhu is great. Uh, for whom the bell tolls suffers a little bit of fatigue just because I've heard it so many times. Um, I don't mind the uh, the two stock tracks, which are Escape and Trap Under Ice. Um, I think it's an outstanding record. I think in 99% of other bands, this would definitely be their best album. But for me, there's just two better. I, I, I love everything about this album. There's no filler. Um, I think the sound, uh, Fade to Black, their first ballad, just just outstanding. Still sounds great live. Um, I can't say a bad thing about this album. I love it. Um, Ride the Lightning, number three for me. All right. All right, Mr. Demon Master, what's your number three? My number three is the Black Album. The album that got me into this band and essentially got me into metal and you know just you see what you said Ben earlier about it you know I probably would fit into the role of one of those kids that got into Metallica and basically if it wasn't for Metallica and the Black Album I'd be listening to metal to this very day you know, I've learned to listen to a new one since this since this album but you know songs like you know at your sandman everybody knows that i still freaking love it sad but true i love um i'm forgiven wherever i may roam don't tread on me i freaking love it nothing else matters i freaking love it i my friend of misery i wish was an instrumental because that's like a big slap in the face and stuff like that i wish this was an instrumental but I do actually like it quite a bit. But yeah, like I said, I I have it at number three. This used to be number two for me, but I still absolutely love it to have it be in my top three. And I absolutely still love to this day the Black Album. That was my number three. All right. Interesting. Cool. All right, so we're going to go through the comments here again real quick. Chris Knott, Puppets is my favorite. Cassette Man Dan, or <laughs> Cassette Mayhem Dan, excuse me, Bear. Master of Puppets, Injustice for All, Ride the Lightning, Load and Kill Them All. That's his ranking, I guess. Chris Knott, Dyer's Eve is what... Ended the angry Metallica. They didn't know how to follow it. I think I kind of agree with that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So Stephanie Wetzel says third for puppets then. Okay. All right. Well, my number three, again, <laughs> could be number one any day. And it just celebrated its 30th, 35th anniversary, excuse me, back on March 3rd. I'll talk Master of Puppets oh. is my number three. <laughs> Not a weak oh. track on here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yet, I was the number three. On the phone like right said, now. <laughs> right. Like I said in the beginning, when I first heard Battery, I was blown away. I had not heard anything that fast, that heavy prior. You know, of course, I was just a little nine-year-old kid that was probably listening to Bon Jovi and Def Leppard Hysteria and albums like that, you know, and Van Halen and ACDC. But Metallica took me to a whole new world. Master of Puppets, again, it blew me away when I first heard it. I couldn't believe 
And even to this day, I still can't believe the instrumentation on this album, and especially on the track Master of Puppets. It's literally like a classical piece, you know, written on electric instruments, obviously. Brilliant, brilliant song. The thing that should not be. <clears throat> Great track. It's heavy. Probably one of the first tracks they ever did, too, where they tuned down to D, which is interesting. You got Welcome Home Sanitarium, the ballad on here, yeah. obviously. You know? So in a way, like the way it's the way this album's laid out, it's very familiar to Ride the Lightning. You got your fast track to open it. You got your you know, you got your um, self titled track for track two. You got your for Warm the Bell Tools type of track with, you know, the thing that should not be. And you got your ballad -y type of track with Welcome Home Sanitarium. So in a way, yeah, that's a similar format, but all great tracks. And my favorite track on this yeah. album, Disposable Heroes. Oh, my goodness. Just riff central on this track. And it's probably my all-time favorite Metallica, Metallica track, if we want to get technical. I love Disposable Heroes. Leper Messiah, another great track. Yeah, you know, yeah. more, more of a deep cut on here, but it's still a damn good track. Or Ryan. Oh my god. <clears throat> Cliff, we miss you. We miss you, Cliff. <laughs> this is I'm telling you, man, this is what's missing in Metallica, man. It's Cliff Burton's definitely Cliff Burton's influence in his writing style. Oh my god, it's a masterpiece. Hell, it's one of them tracks I, I would want played at my funeral. Definitely. And we ended with Damage Incorporated. Great way to end the album. Thrashy, you know, because we all say, fuck it all and fucking no regrets. Yeah, all right. But yeah, excellent yeah. album. My number three. All right, we are down to the last two. The last two. two. All right, for uh, for my number two, I'm going to keep that Puppets train rolling. Master of Puppets is my second favorite Metallica album. Um, there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this album. It's got outstanding album artwork. Uh, artwork. Battery is one of the best openers ever. Uh, Master of Puppets is a masterpiece of metal. I mean, there, there's no weak. I think my least favorite track in this album is probably Sanitarium. That tells you how strong this album is. Um, even the the deep tracks like Leper Messiah and uh, Damage Incorporated, if you consider that, and, uh, Disposable Heroes are outstanding. Um, I think that Orion is the number one instrumental ever. It's my favorite of all time. It's uh, it's probably the only instrumental that I can that I'm excited to hear. I mean, I hear a lot of them and I'm okay with them, but this is the only one I'm like, yes. And this album is just perfect. But to me, there's just one that's just a touch more perfect. So I know a lot of people consider this the greatest metal record of all time, and that that's cool. Um, I think it's outstanding. I just like one just a little bit more. So for me, number two is Master of Puppets. All righty. All right, Ryan. Okay. All right, Chuck, my number two. You talk about being a load fan and carrying that flag. I take that load flag, that flag for load and put it on top of the freaking mountain. My number two is freaking load. I... As I am a huge fan of this freaking album. Everything, and here's a little side note for this one. Originally, I did not care for Mama Said. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it another benefit of a doubt. I'm going to give it a, tr a chance. I have since listened to that song multiple times, and I can't get enough of it. It's, I freaking love it. 
But you got other songs on here. Ain't My Bitch, another great one. Two by four, I love. The House that Jack built, Until It's Sleep, King Nothing. Um, there are some weak songs on here. Uh, Hero of the Day, I kind of like it, but kind of weak. Bleeding, Bleeding Me. Oh, fucking love it. Uh, Cure, I love. Or Twisted Me, I kind of like it. Wasting My Hate is kind of weak, in my opinion. Uh, Thorn Within, I had to mention, Mama said, love it. Thorn Within, love it. I'm probably, I'm probably the only one that likes Ronnie here. I freaking love it. And then, I like it, I think it's catchy. The outlaw torn to close with it out. I freaking love it, love this album. This was at one point number one for me. I had it so hot, but I'll get to number one, but I still absolutely Love this album to death, and it is my number two. So, alrighty, definitely a controversial number two there. <laughs> yeah, I take Good that low flag and put it high on the put it at the top of the mountain, and stand by it and be proud of holding this flag for being a huge fan of load. <laughs> I'm super proud of that. <laughs> All right. All right, so my number two, got to go with the debut, Kill Em All. <laughs> what more could I say? One of the greatest thrash debuts ever, bar none. You can tell on this album, too, they're young, they're hungry, they really want to prove something to the world. I mean, you could tell that, you know, on the No Life Till Leather demo previous. That they were young, hungry, and wanted to prove something to the world. They were out to conquer the world when they put out Kill Em All. I mean, Hit the Lights was the very first Hell Metallica yeah. track ever written. You know, mm. it first it's first released on the Metal Massacre 1 LP, released by Metal Blade Records. The very first release by Metal Blade Records in 1982. And originally featured uh, Lloyd Grant on guitars <laughs> before David yeah. Stain. So you hit the lights, great opener, you know. And probably the very first thrash metal song. Then we get into the massive epic of the album, The Four Horsemen, originally called The Mechanics, written by Dave Mustaine. Now, the mechanics is definitely much faster. However, this, the Four Horsemen, it slowed down a bit. They had a, you know, a melodic middle section in there, you know. It's debatable which version's better. Mm -hmm. Some people say the mechanics. Some people will say the Four Horsemen. I'd probably go with the Four Horsemen myself. It just sounds way Hell more yeah, epic. Same when, here. Yep, when they rewrote it. We got Motor Breath, a punky, short, little Motorhead inspired track, you know. Probably the shortest track in Metallica's discography at only three minutes and three seconds. It's just short, fast, raw, punky to the point. You got Jump into Fire, you can tell Dave Mustaine's all over this track. I mean, it definitely has more of a Dave Mustaine feel to it. And it was written by Dave, or co-written by Dave Mustaine. Jump into fire. And then we get the massive. Anastasia pulling teeth. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. 37 years later, 38 years later, that bass, so that bass solo still makes my jaw drop to this day. It's just so amazing. Watching Cliff play it live back then on old videos, it's even more amazing. So what can I say? It's definitely an amazing bass track by Cliff Burton. So then we go to Whiplash. Whiplash, wow. Just aggressive. Definitely a thrash metal anthem, you know. It's basically about going out there kicking your ass. You know, so yeah, Whiplash, a great track dedicated to all the headbangers and thrashers and moshers, you know, 
Great track. We got the Phantom Lord again, co-written by Dave Mustaine. Definitely has more of a punky sound to it. And again, it's another track too on Kill 'Em All where they add a where they added a melodic midsection. You know, you know the melodic midsections too would be a lot of what you would hear on like albums like Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, Justice, and Going Forth. And the Phantom yeah. Lord's one of the early examples of that. Because the No Life to Leather demo doesn't have that midsection to it. No Remorse, killer track, excellent track, excellent riffs. You can definitely hear the Diamond Head influence on this track. Great stuff. You know, yeah. same with same with so, Seek and Destroy. You can definitely hear the Diamond Head influence yeah. on Seek. Definitely an anthem, probably the most anthetic track off of Kill Em All. Then we end it with the fastest track probably on Kill Em All. Oh my god, yes. Co-written by Dave Mustaine again, and you can tell it's co you can definitely tell it's Dave Mustaine and you can definitely tell it's Dave Mustaine influenced with the guitar style, you know, being played on this track. Metal Militia. Excellent way to end the album. Just pure thrash speed metal. Kill 'em all, excellent album, great debut. It's legendary, and it's going to be remembered for years to come, and it's still going to influence people to play thrash metal. All right, now we oh, are yeah. down to number one. Here we go. All right, just a side note to uh, Kill 'em all. I always associate the uh, two cover tracks, uh, Am I Evil and Blitzkrieg, with that album because my first copy of that had of uh, kill them all had those two tracks on there so it wasn't until year late years later then i started seeing you know versions of it without those two tracks i'm like why did they drop you know am i evil and the blitzkrieg that's very so, true because my original version of kill them all had them two tracks on it i still yeah. have it and, and i don't think back then i was you know reading you know like oh that's a that's a diamond head song you know i, I didn't know i was like I had never heard. To me, it's still a Metallica song. I thought they so, were Metallica. Like, first heard of right. it as a kid. It, okay. Yeah. So, are we ready for the number ones? Here we go. Let's go for it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, yeah. I know I'll be. The, I'm going to be the only one to have this one, and uh, just like Ryan with with Load, I think your age affects your ranking. Just how special the album is to you. Mine, True. my number one album is Injustice for All. I remember buying the album when I was fifth. How how the cassette felt and the lyrics and the picture, everything to me was just perfect. The look, I think that was their best look. I think if you watch the '89 Seattle show from Live Shit Bench and Purge, it was their perfect set list. They, you know, I love Jason. Um, I think Blackened is just to me, it was like Master of Puppets just taken to another level. I know the songs are a little bit repetitive. And my joke to myself back then was like, okay, I'm going to go to work. Time to hear one song off of Band Justice for All. That's about all I could get in, you know, in my 10-minute drive to work. But um, just just track after track, um, one, Eye of the Beholder and Justice for All, shortest, I mean, Harvester, I know you talked about that before. It, it was, it's the cooler, older version of Sad but True. Yep. And right. it's just, it's perfect. It's just, it's heavy, and Freight ends of sanity. Some people hate the, uh, the Wizard of Oz thing at the beginning. I don't mind it. It's, it's part of the track. Um, to live is to die. Every time it slowly comes on, it, it, I'm so excited yeah. to hear it. Um, Dyer's Eve. This album also had. I remember collecting the singles at the time because it had Brad Finn and Brad Finn and the Prince, which That's were right. super cool. And right. back then, to put it in perspective, you'd go to your local record store. I remember paying like forty dollars for the one single because it had Brad Finn on it. And forty dollars in nineteen eighty eight would be like buying a single now for a hundred. Much, yeah. But I had to have it, and I remember just loving Damn. everything about this era. 
So to me, this is just my favorite era. The the songs are timeless. I, I love the this kind of turned me on to tempo changes in, in songs. I love how it would just take off and go somewhere completely different. And I still love that today. And it turned me on to, to Maiden and other bands that are, you know, that do the long songs and the tempo changes. Um, so this is just my favorite. So I, I love the, I remember having the t-shirt. Um, the box set is amazing. I, I love everything about this era. So for me, and Justice for All is number one. Excellent choice. Yeah. All right, Ryan. Okay, I wanted to. Get, I wanted this one to be on camera, but um, and where did my freaking hat go? There it is. Well, my number one. After puppets. Uh, I I've been holding off on saying it for a while, but now I feel like now's the time to say this. Longest time, I had always thought Metallica was a 90s band and that the Black Album was their debut because you know, usually self title is usually a debut. I did not know that they had made albums prior to the Black Album until my mom got me this. This one's the blacking version. Almost all of my albums I've got to mention are blacking except for Saint Anger. But um, my mom got me this when I was like maybe a junior in high school, and I was like, "Wait, this is a Metallica album? This isn't Black Album? What is this?" I think I popped it in, and it completely changed my mind that, "Oh my God, this band, Metallica, made albums in the '80s," and I did not know about it. And subsequently, after that, that's why you see low reloaded Black Album are so high on my list because I grew up with the '90s. Stuff. I did not know they had 80s stuff until this one. But um, as far as this album is concerned, it's perfect to me. Battery, fantastic opener. Then you get the title track. Freaking love it. Um, the thing that should not be. I freaking love it as well. I love every song on here. Here, you know, Welcome Home Sanitarium, Disposable Heroes, freaking love it, Leopard Messiah, I love it. Love it, Orion. I don't like it as much as the Call of Cthulhu, but I still absolutely love it. And then, obviously, Damaging, the namesake of my freaking channel, for Christ's right sake. On. Right on, dude. Freaking a great way, freaking a great way to end what I consider to be a perfect 10 out of 10 album from them, and it is my number one album from them. All right, excellent. Before I go into my number one, I'm going to take a look at the chat here real quick. Um, Chris Knott says, The thing that should not be is heavy as hell. Love that song so much. I agree. Great track. We have to talk about the, contribu awesome song. the contributions Mustaine brought to the table. Right on. Which he did. I have the Beholder I have the, has a bread band on. Had Brit yeah, okay, yeah. I have the Beholder had Brett on it. Single, okay. And we got and, we got, and then we got Nick from Thrills of Metal. What's up, dude? Yes, yeah, what's up, Nick? Necrotic Nick from Thought Black, can't talk now. <laughs> Necrotic Nick from <laughs> Thralls of Metal has joined us, yes. Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for the shout out earlier for my channel too, by the way. Really appreciate that. All right. All right, we got JC Rocks and Metal Reviews here. Hell yeah. And Seth Hell yeah. Is number awesome, one too. JC. Yes, definitely sub to Thrall to Metal and saw and subscribe to JC Rock and Metal Reviews also. Great YouTube channels. Now, we're going to get into my number one. Obviously, there's one album I haven't mentioned yet. My favorite Metallica album. And it's probably been my favorite Metallica album for, I'd say, about 20 years. I'm talking about Ride the Lightning. I just love this album. From the classical acoustic beginning to the thrash of Fight Fire with Fire. 
you know, it just takes you on a journey, you know, and it's like, there's definitely an atmosphere to this album. It's like being trapped in the middle of nowhere in a thunderstorm. That's the vibe I get from this album. You know, you got the title track, Ride the Lightning, epic track, one of my favorites, co-written by Dave Mustaine, too. Just an awesome, epic track, in my opinion. One of my favorites. I love the riff, too. It's real simple, but it just sounds really killer. You got For Warm the Bell Tolls, you know. I can get where people would say, you know what, it does suffer from burnout because it is a bit overplayed. It's kind of weird because, you know, the earlier Metallica tracks, right, they didn't start getting played on FM radio till probably the late 90s. Like, right after Load and Reload came out. Because before that, those albums wouldn't even get touched. So, yeah, and, you know, for one, the bell tolls was obviously used in the movie Zombie Land. Then we get to Fade to that Black. Cool. Fade to Black, one of the coolest, darkest, most melodic ballads Metallica ever wrote. And it's the very first to you know, ballad type of track Metallica ever wrote, you know. I mean, it's a pretty depressing song, you know, when it comes to the lyrical subject on the song, obviously. But man, it's the music awesome on this track, especially when it gets really heavy at the end, you know, and gets pretty epic with the twin guitar harmonies near the end of the track. Then we flip it over to Trapped Under Iced. Now, this is a contribution from um, Kirk Hammett because the Trap Under Ice riff originally was an Exodus riff. Yes, for a track called Impeller, which got re-recorded on the Tempo of the Damned album by Exodus. So yeah, Kirk kind of brought a few riffs over from Exodus to Metallica that he had written while still in Exodus. Escape, now a lot of people would say Escape is easily the weakest track on the album. I always liked it. I never had a problem with it. You know, even the band hates it. The band has never played it live. <laughs> well, I take that back. A little while. Back in the old days, they never played it live. Oh. They didn't play it live until... I think around the time death or around the time they were touring for Death Magnetic, that's when they finally broke out, escape and played it live. Creeping Death. What more can I say about Creeping Death? It's a freaking epic thrash metal masterpiece. It's got some of the greatest freaking thrash metal rips. I mean, you got the down picking of James Hetfield, which is just insane. I mean, he's definitely one of the greatest metal rhythm guitar players on the planet, you know. His down picking's just unbelievable. And he plays even faster live, which is really amazing. And we close it off with Call yeah. to Two. Just a masterpiece to me when it comes to an instrumental. Epic, majestic, co written by Dave Mustaine actually too. In the beginning of called Cthulhu would be altered for Hangar 18 on Rust in Peace, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, when you listen to Hangar 18, you can hear Call Cthulhu in the in the rhythm section of it. You know, with the chord progressions. But anyways, my yes. number one's I, the Lightning. I easily can say the Call of Cthulhu is their best instrumental song ever. Bar none, period. Right. Better than Orion. Well, slightly better than Slipside, and definitely better than Suicide and Redemption. Easily. Definitely an epic. All right. I'm going to read the comments real quick before we leave here. Okay. Not a problem, man. I hope it helped you out. Hey, man, I got about, I think I got 11 or 12 new subscribers today, so I definitely appreciate it. Ride the Lightning is legit 
perfect in my mind. Heck yeah, I definitely agree with that. And JC says, Ride the Lightning is a close second for me. Hey, still high up there, man. Anyways, so that's our rankings. Um, want to thank Chuck for coming on the show tonight. And I guess before we leave, talk about your YouTube channel and if you got any content coming up in the near future. Well, <laughs> we do a, a Iced Earth podcast. And right now, with the state of Iced Earth, we are taking a hiatus. Uh, as anybody might know, John Schaefer is, is in jail right now. And uh, even before this, me and Jason had both experienced a couple deaths in the family, so we were taking a hiatus. And now Sorry. with with the uh, with the unknowns of Iced Earth, we've kind of put it on hold. I, I would love to think that, you know, six months down the road or whatever, once this stuff is over, we could pick up content and stuff. We were we had some good stuff planned. We were supposed to have Ripper on and uh, you know, some other big guests and uh, hopefully it'll come back, but we still have uh, our old content on there. Yeah, so you can still got, check us out on Podcast and Stone. Hopefully you guys definitely have a good thing going on over there. I mean, definitely got a great YouTube page, and I definitely wouldn't have found out about, you know, a lot of the former members of Ice Earth and what they're up to, you know, today, if it wasn't for that channel. So I definitely thank you guys for that channel. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Um. Got anything to say there, Ryan? Um, no other than check us out on here on YouTube, Damage Incorporated. We're also on Patreon. Patreon, just look up if you ever get the app, go and sign up for it, and uh, go and follow us over there. We're trying to get trying to establish ourselves over there now since we're doing videos over there more often than we are on YouTube, as I did. A live stream yesterday, um, which y'all can now just check the video out. It's just in video form now, where I reviewed uh, Soil Works, A Wisp of the Atlantic. But we are slowly now going over to Utreon to focus on video there, since we have a little bit more views over there. No, but yeah, definitely check our YouTube, my channel's YouTube. Ben's on there. He might be some potentially. This might be on there in the future, but it might be more edited down. So anything, whatever it is, we might end up putting it on there, whether it be on his or mine. So yeah, definitely check us out on YouTube and Utreon. All right. Well, that's it for the show. Um, Thanks, for, thanks to Chuck Hoskins for podcast at Stone for joining. And you know what? Um, sub definitely subscribe if you love what you see, man. Help get these videos out there, man. Oh, yeah. And I want to thank everybody yeah. for tonight for this episode number three of our rankings. The best from worst of Metallica. Up next on Thursday... I will be interviewing Xavier from Sadistic Oppressor. So stay tuned for that. Hell yeah. I'm going I'm to be ranking the 16 studio albums of the Sept coming up to in the future. That should be coming up actually within the next week. I'm going to rank all the Slayer albums too. And that's pretty much what's going on here on Metal Bent's Chronicles in the future. And... For now, we are signing out. Thank you all very much again for stopping by. And you know what we say around here? Get ready, boys. Keep it metal. Hell yeah. Right. We are out. <laughs>